Uh, Hej, jag heter Robert Schoff och jag är Amnes förutredare i Polymera kompositmaterial på Luleå tekniska universitet. Uh, men uh, förlåt, men jag ska faktiskt presentera på engelska. So I will switch to English. I hope that's fine. Uh, and I think I can accept also questions in, in Swedish, but if not, I guess I will get some help there. Anyways, uh, I would like to, I'm uh, very thankful that uh, we have an opportunity to present our project, which is called Restart. It's the reuse of ice hockey sticks in energy dissipating uh, structures. And uh, actually, uh, it was meant that Patrick Fernberg, professor in, in Polymer Composites would be presenting this uh, this uh, project, but he cannot participate. But as it was said, also Thomas Brew is here and he is from RICE and he will be able to answer some of the questions because he is involved quite a bit with the uh, testing uh, of uh, actual energy dissipating capacities. So yes, let's uh, let's move on with it. So of course, the restart project, which is funded by resource and uh, we have actually a consortium consisting of Lula University. Uh, or RICE, uh, or also uh, end user of or producer of the automotive parts Gestamp, and we also have uh, Lula uh, Hockey uh, with us as well in the project. And the project is actually a pre-study with the aim to evaluate possibility to use uh, scrap ties hockey sticks. And we want to, to show that it's actually possible to use them for crash energy absorbing components in, in cars, actually. Uh, what is actually project about? Uh, we want, of course, to to look at what we are having in terms of uh, all the chain value chain within this uh, idea, and uh, study how the mechanically performing these these materials, how good they are actually, and of course also to look at what what is the market size there, how can we how many of those sticks we can get, and and identify also partners in this value chain. Uh, when we look at the hockey sticks, what we are seeing is, of course, it's a quite long shaft with a, with a blade at the end. And uh, if you cut them up, you have different cross sections as shown on the picture in the middle, uh, upper picture. And if you look actually inside what it is, it's a, it's a polymer composite. And it's actually, I can tell you, it's a very good polymer composite. It, it's actually a laminate, which consists of like multiple layers stuck together. And these layers may have different fiber orientations. Typically, these fiber orientations are within plus minus 45 degrees because uh, the sticks are designed for a torsion, uh, and 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 uh, but they also contain some um, fibers aligned with the with the loading or along the, sh uh, the the shaft and perpendicular to shaft, so it's 90 degree. And the fiber content is 50, 60 percent by volume. And actually, I can tell you that this is really uh, aerospace grade material because of the qual components or the raw materials which are used or constituents. And the way it's actually made and in the bottom picture, you can see the laminate. It's very nicely packed fibers, no voids, nothing uh, there to, to, to complain about. So really good, nice material. Uh, the challenges, of course, we are facing with these materials, why we are even looking at it, because actually, and I wanted to actually say that it's a good time to look at it, because I guess even those who are not interested in hockey have noticed that the Hockey World Championship is going on. So you probably have caught few at least minutes of that and you've seen that hockey sticks break and they break quite often actually uh, they are very lightweight construction so that's a good thing about them and they have really nice mechanical properties but they still fail and they fail very often uh, because uh, well hockey players are giving the best when they play and actually in a season the stars hockey stars can can actually consume up to let's say 100 sticks per per, per year not per season, but per year. And those sticks are, of course, like I said, very, very high performance materials, very good uh, quality, and they are expensive. So we are talking about the, the price, which has like 150, 300 euros easily. And the problem is also that they cannot be so easily recycled because it's a thermoset resin inside, so you can't really melt or, or reshape these things. And we also have a very long fibers in those, which is a good thing, but it's not so easy to get out. So what happens uh, in, uh, commonly is that they are burned up for energy. So energy recovery possible, that's not really the best way uh, to, to, to use these materials. And of course, it's not the best way to not, not good for environment. What about then reusing these things? And uh, often we can see that the reuse of composite actually makes more sense from an economical and also ecological point of view. And if you look actually at the potential of reusing uh, hockey sticks, we can see that actually even if the stick breaks, let's say, and often it breaks where the blade is, the rest of material is intact. So often we have these 
sticks, shafts, which are 100 centimeters to, to uh, sorry, 10 centimeters to one, one or two meter long. And we actually should be able to use them because they are not actually damaged. They are of good quality. Uh, and if you look how many of those we can get, uh, it is the numbers are actually, uh, when I saw for, first saw it, I was quite impressed because we, we can see that there are more than one and a half million licensed players globally. Uh, if you look at Sweden, that's over 60,000 players. And a part of Sweden in other Nordic countries, we have 80,000. So let's say we have even just in the Nordic countries up here, we have 150,000 uh, players. And, and if even they break not 100 sticks per year, but only 10, we are talking about a million sticks. That's quite quite big amount of material. And if you look globally, we are going even one order higher. So we are talking about really many, many good material uh, materials available, which, which are wasted right now. What we are thinking of then, why don't we use these or reuse them in the cars as uh, efficient crash, crash absorption elements? And actually, Gestamp, our, our partners, are quite interested in this. And uh, our main question is actually, how we can take out these segments from the stick, which is mostly intact, and how can we use them as these lightweight crash absorbing elements? So what we have done so far is that we, we got around 150 sticks from Lulio Hockey, because they actually collect them, of course, when they are broken. And we have analyzed them by, by, by different uh, properties. For instance, one of them is cross-section, and you can see that most of the sticks are rectangular or, or kind of rectangular. And uh, what, what's more important is that out of these sticks we, we looked at, we have like 130 meter of shafts which can be used to something, okay? And that's something, like I said, we, we, we propose to use them as energy absorbing elements. Uh, of course, we need to be able to, when we design these things, these absorbing ele energy absorbing elements, we need to be able to say what are the properties of these uh, materials we are using. And we have done quite wide uh, evaluation of properties. What you can see here, for instance, is the tensile modules of stiffness of the stick in the shaft direction. Uh, we, we have cut them up and you can see the different sticks. What, what we want to see, of course, variation within and between sticks and variation between different sticks, uh, clubs or, or hockey sticks, because they actually differ by the number. It's, it's called flex number because when players are playing, they have different styles, they have different weight and so on. So they actually, when they shoot, you can see, I showed it on one of the first images, that the stick actually bends quite a bit and then it releases energy. So we looked at different uh, sticks here and you can see that we, there is some variation, of course, because we are looking at the sticks with the different models. On the image, on the graph here, you see actually two models, 36 and 99, those are ID sticks, uh, just our own nomenclature, and they are, somewhat different but not so much and then of course if you have a higher flex number you will have also higher stiffness generally speaking there is a variation but but it's pretty stable i would say especially if you are going to combine things together so if you go along the stick it's not so much difference if you go between the stick if you know the, the flex number you can actually say okay i know that this stick is going to be a little bit different but statistically speaking if you are going to assemble them it should somehow level up Okay, so we know about the mechanical properties, we know they maintain them. Now we take this piece of stick and actually trying to look what is the energy can be consumed. And here you can see the test which was performed at um, Rice. And this is just one uh, piece, which is then compressed. And, we are, and, and the idea is to look how much energy have been consumed. The important part here to realize is that the stick breaks progressively. You can see all these uh, shavings forming. And this is a good thing because all of that is consuming energy. If it would be some kind of brittle failure or just stick would go down, that of course gives us nothing. If you look at the result here, you can see the graph, which is a load and, and crashing distance. So we are measuring the load as we go. You, you see the graph on the left side and on the right side, you can see how the stick actually looks after the test. So first of all, to notice, we did achieve a progressive damage. And that of course was achieved because we also introduced some some special shape at the top of the stick so it does not it's not a straight edge but it's it's edge which which kind of gives this first imp, uh, kind of input to the progressive damage and then you can see that when stick started to to break it's not like it breaks down very rapidly that wouldn't be good because not much energy consumed but we have this 
very stable load when the stick is failing. So actually we have uh, calculated specific energy absorption, which is uh, how much energy per kilogram is consumed by these materials, okay? And as you can see here, for, with the sticks we tested, we got between 87 and 112 kilojoules per kilogram. Well, the number itself doesn't tell, tell much. So how does it compare to other materials? And that's what you can see actually here. We see specific energy absorption, kilojoule per kilogram. You can see steel up here, aluminum structures are in yellow, and then different composite uh, carbon composite structures and different meaning uh, different fibers, different assemblies and so on. But when we look at the our material, restart material, you can see that we are we are within very good limits here. We are actually capturing the upper end of composite materials uh, which are available. So once again, it's proven that we have very good materials to work with. What next? Next, we're actually now trying to assemble those uh, those uh, multi-shaft samples. You can see here that we have pieces cut. In this case, it's a six six shafts in one element, and we are using 3D printing to to print the assembly parts. And we are putting them all together in the in the PVC cylindrical base. And, and we use polyurethane foam to keep them together. And then all that element goes into the press and we are doing compression of multi-element um, assembly. And here you can see the test going on on the right-hand side. So we have a compression. And one thing you can notice, for instance, middle element is somewhat behaving differently from the rest of them. That's not very good. But on the other hand, we still see that it's progressive failure. And that actually is shown also on the graph on the left hand side, where you can see that actually we have load going, picking up, but then it drops. That's a difference between a single and multiple uh, elements. That something happens which we don't want to be happening because we want to be more kind of constant load level. So we still have to work uh, on introducing really progressive damage for all of those elements. So right now there is something going on which, which we are looking in, and these are quite fresh data. Uh, but it's somewhat non-progressive damage happening, which we need to, to work with. Um, what is the next step? Next step, we actually want to test this in the as close as possible conditions in the real life. So what we do, we assemble now this uh, crash box based on, on a special uh, design from Gestamp. You can see here that this is going to be a piece in the base of this uh, element, and it will be attached to the bumper which then will be tested as, as car crashes. Um, just to summarize what I have said, so we have very good material to work with. We have very high quality composites. Those composites perform very well, and we have actually shown that we do have good energy absorption potential. However, we still have to work on uh, making it happening as, as that it's in multi-shaft assembly, it works better. But uh, so far, we are very happy with the results, and it shows quite good potential. And uh, just uh, at the end, I would like to acknowledge our uh, partners from, from Gestamp, Ricard Ostlund and Sven Lindbeck, also from Rice, Tommy Oman, Mona Bergstrom, Alexander Westman from Lulia Hockey. And of course, being at the university, we are using uh, or we involve students in our work. So you can see a number of students who have done their projects in this, uh, in this study. And obviously, we are very thankful to Resource for funding this because we think it's a it's a very good potential to become something much bigger. But of course, we still need to work on it and involve more industrial partners and see how it can be brought to the next level. Well, thank you very much for your attention.